From Church Militant Studios, this is the Church Militant Evening News. Hello and thank you for joining us this Tuesday, February 7th. I am Hunter Bradford, along with James Fidua, here with Catholic News in Context. Tonight, Church Militant has got the incredible chance to premiere this great show. And this religious group is calling on Christians to defend natural law. And a devastating earthquake in this region has left a community in shambles. Leading us off tonight today, Church Milton proudly premiered Strickland Speaks, a weekly show new to our ever-expanding lineup. It features our friends Terry Barber from Virgin Most Powerful Radio and Bishop Joseph Strickland from the Diocese of Tyler, Texas. In this week's half-hour episode, the faithful bishop explains how God's love for us should motivate us from sin to greatness. That is what's so counterfeit yeah. about what we're even hearing from prelates in the church today, that we don't need to turn from sin. God loves us. Because God loves us, we must turn from sin. But because God loves us in His perfect love and perfect wisdom, He knows sin destroys us, sin harms us. That's why He doesn't want us to sin. Bishop Strickland is also calling out the hedonism and depravity of, Gram of the Grammys, so though some are dismissing his warning. He condemned the antics of Sam Smith dressed as the devil in a satanic performance during the Sunday night musical revelry. We'd like to warn you, the footage is disturbing. Like we said, Strickland tweeted, This atrocity should be denounced by every music artist in the nation. Instead, there is a symphony of silence. The depravity in our nation is reaching devastating levels. We must pray for God's mercy. A number of social media users were blasé about the demonic performance, noting you can change the channel, inciting freedom of expression. The Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priest or SNAP is responding to a report we told you about last night. The recent Diocese of Worcester's report discusses 173 credible allegations of clerical sex abuse dating back to 1950. The diocese did not, however, release the names of the abusers. In a statement today, SNAP says it's appalled by the omission, explaining parents can better safeguard their children if they're aware of the names. The organization is calling on Bishop Robert McManus for greater transparency and leadership. What is the Diocese of Knoxville, Tennessee and its bishop trying to hide? Embroiled in a lawsuit involving homosexual predation, last week the diocese asked a judge to keep related investigative documents sealed. According to Knox News, the diocese wants materials connected to the church's sexual abuse review board and private meetings with priests kept under lock and key. The lawsuit against the diocese and Bishop Richard Sticka was filed this time last year. As we've reported, the plaintiff, a former diocesan employee, alleges a seminarian raped and harassed him in 2019 and that Sticka tried to intimidate him into remaining silent. Muslim leaders are calling out the Anglican Archbishop of Canterbury for plans to offer same-sex blessings and normalize homosexuality in schools. The Association of British Muslims, or ABM, wrote to Archbishop Justin Welby on Friday, warning him that marriage is at stake if every Church of England school teaches gay unions are normal. In a letter obtained by a church militant, the head of ABM expressed his, quote, concern about the teaching of sexual identity in politics in schools, including Church of England schools. He told Church Militant, we are concerned that traditional sentiments on marriage found in most religions and communities are not being respected. Dr. Tim Deeb, Islamic scholar and head of policy for Christian Concern, told Church Militant that Muslims would leave Anglican schools if Anglican bishops voted for same-sex blessings. Joining us now is our best Rome correspondent. We got the very best, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, first, good to see you. Uh, there may be people wondering why a Catholic media apostle is concerned about this Anglican story involving Archbishop Justin Welby. So what would you say to them? Hunter, flattery will get you everywhere. 
Uh, now, uh, this is very relevant for the Catholic Church, first of all, because on his return trip from South Sudan, Pope Francis gave a press conference on board the aircraft with the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and the moderator of the Church of Scotland, uh, the Reverend Ian Greenfield, uh, Greenshields. Now, all of them unanimously affirmed homosexuals. Uh, and, uh, they, you know, they spoke against the criminalization of homosexuality. But what is shocking is that Pope Francis is in a very close ecumenical relationship with these two Protestant leaders whose denominations globally have adopted same-sex blessings in some cases and same-sex marriage in other cases. And, 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 and this gangrene is being opposed by conservatives in, you know, both these denominations, especially in the Church of England. And uh, the Catholic Church, with all its magisterial teaching on homosexuality, is the, doing nothing to support the conservatives in these denominations, but it is standing by these ultra-liberal and progressive Protestant leaders. Now, you just mentioned the fact that Pope Francis seems to be at least friendly towards some leaders of some Protestant denominations. Is there an ecumenical traditionalist alliance building between people of all religious who are opposed to the LGBT agenda? Absolutely, and I was part of this uh, three or four years ago where Orthodox Jews and Muslims and evangelical Christians and conservative Catholics came together when the government was pushing the religion, uh, the relationships and sex education down the throats of failed schools. And sadly, both the Catholic and Church of England schools capitulated wholesale to this agenda, but Muslims stood shoulder to shoulder with Orthodox Christians, Hunter. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Dr. Jules Gomez, like I said, you are the best correspondent, Rome correspondent we have. Thank you for your reporting, and thank you for your time today. Thank you, Hunter. God bless you. All right, Dr. Gomez. So, for alleged treason and spreading false news, four Catholic priests in Nicaragua are being sentenced to 10 years in prison. Yesterday, a judge sentenced not only the four priests, but two seminarians for the same charges and a cameraman for a Catholic channel. The four priests belong to the Diocese of Matagalpa. Anti-Catholic leader Daniel Ortega is seeking to get rid of anyone in the country who poses a threat to his totalitarian regime. On Monday, a devastating earthquake struck Turkey and Syria, leaving a massive humanitarian crisis in its wake with over 6,000 dead. Speaking to Fidesz, Bishop of Aleppo Antoine Audo said, Among the many we have had, this is a disaster that, so to speak, we are not used to. After 12 years of war, this is a new tremendous bomb, lethal and unknown, which falls on us. Also speaking to Fidesz, Bishop Paolo Bezzetti, who serves as the Apostolic Vicar of Anatolia in Turkey, says a cathedral, the Church of the Annunciation, collapsed, but thankfully no one was hurt. Please keep the people there in your prayers. And when we come back, a student punished for sticking to his beliefs has just received his final punishment. And the left is changing the language on how to talk about pro-life groups. Stay tuned. All that and more up next. Thank you for watching the first half of Church Milton Evening News. If you would like to watch the rest of today's episode, please click the link in the description and we'll see you at churchmilton.com. God love you.